Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Homesteading Off the Grid. Folks, I'm here to tell you that preparedness, patience, and persistence trump panic uh, and irrationality in what seems to be our current uh, culture of fear here in America. Um, good news as of this recording, and this message really is applicable at any time, but as of this recording, it's Saturday morning, um, September 15, 2018, and we just dodged a humongous, ginormous bullet called uh, Hurricane Florence. Um, as of this recording, um, Hurricane Florence has been downgraded to Tropical Storm Florence, and our hearts, our thoughts, our minds, our prayers go out to the folks who are being directly affected right now by this storm in uh, North Carolina. It's now made its way, it looks like, at last reports into South Carolina. There's massive flooding. Unfortunately, there have been some deaths. We saw a story there of a mother and her infant child. Uh, God rest their souls, um, lost their lives. So bad things have happened, are happening. I saw footage of, uh, you know, we went to um, Nags Head uh, after my wife and my son and I all moved here from the Philippines just a couple of years ago. One of the first places we went was Nags Head and we saw the hotel where we stayed, uh, the bottom part of it at least, underwater and some footage there earlier. So there's some nasty flooding going on. Now, um, many of you follow our channel regularly. Thank you for being here. Um, I know you wanted to know how we're doing. We're doing great. We've been late in getting to you this morning this message because our internet has been going off and on, but thus far we've not lost any power. Um, you know, the electricity hasn't gone out, and of course we're prepared for that if it does. Um, and part of the reason our internet is probably spotty is because we're with CenturyLink and their home base is down in North Carolina. So we can imagine the problems they're having there is affecting our service. And this pales in comparison to what the people are going through down there. I am not minimizing anything going on by anybody. Um, I want to point out that my point of this is that five days ago, uh, here in Central Virginia, we are in Albemarle County, Virginia, home of the Who's, Go Who's Go. Um, four or five days ago, we were told that we were in the direct path of the storm. Um, we were going to get obliterated, make sure to have our doors open in, on our 20 foot bunker so we could run into our 20 foot bunker, make sure to have 20 years worth of provisions down there, gas masks and all these things. Now I'm going overboard of course here. Uh, but, uh, those of you who follow know, I don't think like most people, um, I went through a period of deprogramming where I unlearned everything I had learned here in our culture for nearly 40 years. Um, so I was able to kind of sit back and watch and be patient, be prepared. Um, we, we were already kind of prepared for any, anything of this sort that would come through here barring major catastrophe, but of course the only thing that you can do in such circumstances really is evacuate ahead of time. And with that thought in mind, um, as the mainstream media was flipping the light switch for the, uh, the fear machine, you know, because they can, there's so much money to be made from fear and panic and uh, the boogeyman under the bed. And so every week, I mean, they come up with a new one. Um, some people do it better than others. Uh, some folks, it's like beating a drum, we're tired of hearing it, and a lot of them are no longer with us here on social media, and frankly, uh, I don't see where they're missed too much. Um, it gets old, people, it gets old, playing on people's fears, playing on people's panics, or panic mechanisms, and uh, well, it didn't work with us this time, and it didn't work with a lot of people, but when they flipped that switch on five days ago, oh, you better panic, you better get as far away from where you are as you can, because you're in the direct path. Well, we looked at the projected path at that time and where they were saying we should go. And uh, my pre-unprogrammed American sheep mind said, okay, I've got to leave Virginia because I'm too close to the coast. I've got to make a run to Ohio. If I just go over across the Ohio River, um, be sitting safely on the other side of the Ohio River, 
Uh, I'll just watch the news and see how much my homestead here in Central Virginia gets demolished by this storm, and then I'll go back and pick up the pieces afterward if I can. Um, well, here we are five days later. The storm switched directions. It's been downgraded to a tropical storm. Still a lot of flooding going on, and they're saying it can dump up to 40 inches of rain where it does pass through. And again, I am not minimizing what's going on. I'm talking about our situation here, um, and, and most of us are not in direct path of the storm um, but a lot of us are on the east coast a lot of us are in the mid-atlantic uh, so a lot of us can relate to what i'm saying here as far as that you know mainstream media the other powers that be trying to flip on that switch well we didn't buy it we stayed put we prepared but we were patient because we persevered in the past and we were not going to let uh the, the fear machine and the mainstream media and those who profit from such things um Gosh, you should see some of the comments. I'm not even going to repeat them because I don't want to give credibility to completely uncredible comments people were making about this weather stuff on our channel. But um, had we fled to Ohio, it appears as if we would be getting more of this storm dumped on top of us than we are going to by staying here in central Virginia. Um, it looks as if the storm has switched its direction and it is now heading up the, uh, the the Ohio Valley, or soon will be heading up the Ohio Valley. So if I were sitting there on the other side of the Ohio River, I would be sitting in potentially 20 to 40 inches of rain. Of course, it's supposed to rain itself out, so they're saying, before it makes it that far up. And then my homestead would have been over here in central Virginia, just, you know, hardly affected whatsoever. Now, I'm making sure to capture my Toyota Sequoia in the middle of the field back there because uh, I did move it out from underneath all the trees. I did make sure to have weeks worth of food and water, clean drinking water in my house. I do have my hatchet, my axe, all these things to break out of the attic in some sort of worst case scenario, flooding of biblical proportions. I prepared, but I didn't panic and I didn't flee and I didn't end up actually running into the storm because the storm ended up going somewhere differently then they were telling me it was going to go five days ago when they were trying to instill panic and fear and all these things. Was it a little nerve-wracking? Yeah. I mean, when you've got something like this coming your way and when you see the devastation it's doing down there where it is, um, of course. Now, it's easy for me to say don't panic, don't rush off in haste, uh, don't evacuate um, when I'm not in the direct path of the storm, but that's exactly why I'm saying this because I'm not in the direct path of the storm um, and it never looked... To me as if we were even going to be close it just look it, but it did if it were to come this way we would have had several days in advance to make arrangements and get out it looked like the mainstream media machine and the powers that be wanted just about everybody who was on the east coast to think they were in direct path of the storm because my gosh that sells newspapers doesn't it that's an old saying a lot of folks watching this probably don't even know what newspapers uh are there's still a few out there i believe um, ask your parents or your grandparents. There were these old archaic things where they actually printed news on um, paper. So I guess in modern terms, we'd say that gets a lot of uh, clicks, a lot of, you know, the, the bloggers that write the fear and the panic and have their websites set up to just basically keep people scared and in fear, convinced that they are going to come take them away and whatever, put them in internment camps because of a little bit of rain. Never happened, folks. It never happened. Um, and it... And again, you've heard me say on some of these rambles here previously, if you are in direct path of the storm, the direct path of the storm, and they're telling you to evacuate, evacuate, leave, okay? Um, but not when the people on the mainstream media outlets are telling you, and you're three or four states away. Um, guys, there's charades up, isn't it? I mean, don't we see through them the lies, the dishonesty, the way they twist things? Uh, we know that the main corporations own all the multi-flavored outlets. So they'll take one story. They have two different market groups. One want to believe this happened. One wants to believe that happened. So they'll twist the same story two different ways to appease both groups and get both of their business. Well, we're here. We're fine. We are expecting some rain here through the weekend. Uh, we'll stay in touch as much as we can, as safely as we can, and things might change. I mean, that storm could whip up around. These might be all my famous last words here, and we might be heading to Ohio if the thing changes. We're staying uh, alert. We're staying 
uh, persistent in our alertness and we're going to remain prepared. We're not going to go have a party out here in the yard and start dumping all of our water that we've got bottled up out um, because it ain't over yet and, and things can still change. But it's really uh, liberating to live through such experiences as this and not panic and not fear. Be prepared. Be ready. Um, I took two naps yesterday. That's how relaxed I was. Now that the storm was finally here, I know I'm prepared. Um, if I were panicked, if I were in fear mode, there's no way I could have not only just not taken two naps or one nap, but I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep for the last few nights. So anyway, I'm kind of starting to ramble now, but of course that's what this is all about, isn't it? The morning ramble. I guess there's a little bit of resentment. I had, I'm harboring some resentment, guys, that for so many years I allowed the machine to whip up panics and, you know, guys, I mean, I'll admit it. After 9-11, I, I remember going out and buying plastic to put up on the inside of my windows for some chemical attack that was going to come that never came. Um, it used to work on me, guys, but I guess it's like the old story, the little boy that cried wolf. But in this case, it's not us. It's not the little boy. It's the mainstream media. It's the machine. It's the system, and we're just not buying it anymore. We are not going to live in fear. We're not going to live in terror. You know what I'm going to do as soon as I stop recording this? This is my message to the mainstream media who's trying to scare me out of my home and to get me to flee. And as a matter of fact, I'm not going to do it after this recording. Here's my little buddy. Hey, girl. Say good morning to Miss Cleopatra, everybody. She's out here following me around, and people were saying that they hoped that uh, I had my kitty cat inside. Well... Of course I did. Unless if I was outside, then she was out here with me. She goes everywhere I go. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to I'm gonna do it before I stop recording. I'm going to go do it right now so you can watch. This is how scared I am. This is how much the mainstream media convinced me to panic um, so they could get a million clicks while I was hiding in the basement of fear with my 20 years of provisions. Watch this. This is a direct message to the mainstream media who tried to scare me away from my homestead. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna eat fresh tomatoes. Look at that. They're so ripe and so many of them, as soon as you touch them, the whole vine comes off. But it's crazy, guys. We were so preoccupied with building our, our chicken house. Look at all these tomatoes. Our chicken house, preparing for the storm, all these things. We'd forgotten all about our garden in our fall uh, harvest planting challenge. I came in here yesterday to make sure there were not there was nothing in here that would be turned into projectiles if the winds did rip up and I saw tomatoes and radishes and peppers and all kinds of stuff. So this is I guess this is my response to the mainstream media. You want me to be scared? You want me to take irrational actions so you can make money? You want to make the panic-stricken mob more dangerous than the storm itself? This is my response. I wouldn't waste throwing a perfectly good tomato at the commenters who make those statements because I'd rather eat it. We're not watching. We're not listening. You know, we're watching to the degree to which we need to to stay updated with certain facts. But once you stop, once you start twisting them, we're tuning out. We're not even throwing tomatoes at you anymore because we're eating them. I hope everybody out there has a wonderful day. If you are in the direct path of the storm and you know you, you know you need to evacuate, do it. If you're three states away. No matter how much they try to get you to panic, don't panic. Go outside and eat some tomatoes. We'll see you more. We'll see you for more next time at Homesteading Off the Grid.